Well, hey, good morning and welcome to Log Cabin Firewood. Today on the channel, we have to service and clean the 500i because we have been neglecting it for probably a month. Uh, we're going to put the blower on that, clean that thing up. I'm going to mess with the rakers, sharpen the chain, dress up the bar if needed. Uh, we've got a few things I found that were problematic with the trailer. Actually, just one thing. But we're going to take care of that one thing that I found uh, wrong with the trailer. And yeah, I got some cool stuff to put on the 500i. So stick around. <laughs> So yes, last week uh, when we were finishing up that pile of stuff in the driveway, I ended up hitting the blacktop. Um, there was that big massive piece that was like ripped in half or I guess it uh, like barber chaired when it broke. Um, I couldn't get it rolled over and I just barely nicked the blacktop. So um, I haven't cut anything since, but I'm getting ready to go over to my neighbors here in the next few days. And while I'm tearing this all apart and putting some new cool things on that are in this box, um, I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen the chain, check the rakers. Uh, I've also got a new sprocket that we're gonna put on here. We'll show you what the uh, one that is on here looks like uh, versus the new one. But yeah, I am gonna use the Oops uh, power pack. And I haven't charged this thing yet. I'm still at 81%. I believe it was last week's video that I, I did this as well. So I won't bore you with this. I'll fast forward through this and uh, we'll go from there. So I figured while I'm cleaning the saw, I could go ahead and sharpen the chain and address the breaker before I tear it all apart. That way when I put this thing back together, the chain's ready to go. Just kind of uh, saving myself an extra step towards the end and taking care of it now. So now that we have the rakers done, we're gonna go ahead and turn this off here. And I went from 81% down to 78%. This thing's sitting here in full sun now too. I probably need to get it in the house. Um, but now we can go ahead and take the uh, bar off of the saw. And I'm gonna break these loose first. And then we'll take this off here. Oh, uh, now I haven't cleaned this thing in, uh, I couldn't tell you, honestly. <laughs> I forget the last time I took this apart and actually blew the saw out. And then you can see a little bit of uh, the buildup in here where the oil and the dust just collect. So we'll, we'll blow that out. And I like to take my uh, chain tensioner and just back it up a little bit. That way when I put the saw on there, it will be a little bit easier. But like I said, I like to go ahead and sharpen my chain and dress the rakers before we uh, tear everything apart that way when I put it back together that chain's ready to go but you can see here this is a mess in here too but I uh, go through and I blow out all the oil holes uh, the rail and make sure this is clean and you can see the oil hole on this one is blocked up but uh, we got to get that opened up because now I'm going to run my saw the right way instead of upside down. Uh, one of the cool features about the West Coast saw raker gauge is that it also doubles as a cleaning tool for your rail. And I got a lot of build up in here. But that just took care of that. Now that hole is almost open. There we go. We'll flip it over and do the other side. And you can see all that's all the buildup in here that's coming out. It's 
That's why it's important to uh, dress your bar and clean your bar often and not do like me and do it uh, every so often. Um, having all this dirt and debris, it, uh, it stops your bar from oiling properly, which can lead to a dull chain quicker. But we'll blow this out one more time. There we go, it's clean. So I said I would dress the bar if I needed to, if I felt feel any burrs on here. I don't really feel any burrs, but they make a tool that you could buy on Amazon. It's really cheap, it's like 13 bucks. It is a bar dressing tool where it has a nice perfect 90 degree guide and then the file is, uh, it lays flat on here. Um, TC's Outdoors, uh, Tony up in New York actually showed me that tool. And it's something that a lot of people don't know about. If, you're, if your saw's running, cutting crooked, um, you know, you might have a burr on here. Uh, Dude Ranch just talked about this, I think last week and, or two weeks ago in one of their videos as well. Um, but it's always nice to take care of it. I actually do feel a burr down here that I'm gonna take care of. And I'm just gonna use my file. No more burr there. Well, I've got a little one on the front here. All right, no more burr there. There's not one on that other side. So we are good to go. All right, next. All right, that is good enough to get dirty again. Next. And this is my favorite part right here, getting these caps clean. And if anything, I should be doing this every time I use a saw to prevent dirt and uh, chips from getting in the tank. Next, we're gonna take the uh, filter cover off. One of the hiding spots on this saw is right here. That likes to uh, jam up a sawdust. You wanna keep that clean, because right in here, I believe, is where all the computer components are, and it can jam up and uh, become a, tr uh, a nuisance for you. But we're gonna tear this part here apart a little bit further here in a sec, and you'll see why. All right, well now that the saw is completely torn apart, we're gonna take care of something that has been sitting on my shelf since I bought this saw and since I put the uh, bark box on it. I actually bought this with the bark box, but I was not confident enough to put it on at the time. And this is the West Coast Saw Faller Suspension Kit. And what this does is it kind of tightens up everything in here. Um, not that I'm a feller or anything like that. I really don't think I need it, but I bought it anyway. So we're going to put it on. Well, all right, a little bit of wardrobe change and scenery change. Um, it was getting way too hot over there in the sun. Today is uh, July 5th, um, day after 4th of July, obviously. And I just checked my mail and I got this awesome new shirt, man, from Up in Smoke. If you guys haven't seen this yet, I got a hat too, man. Um, all I was expecting was a sticker. And I got the sticker. I got two of them. Three of them. But uh, Steve recently started this channel, I think. Um, I think he just broke a thousand subs. I, don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. But uh, yeah, he reached out to me and gave me his address. I sent him some stickers and then he sends me a hat and a shirt. Well, Steve, I got hats coming. I will definitely get you a hat in the mail as soon as they show up. I definitely appreciate it. And make sure you guys check out Up in Smoke. Really cool firewood channel. The man's, he's, uh, uh, he's brilliant. I love the way he films. I love the way he edits. Um, he's got all nice Wolf Ridge equipment. He's got, uh, he's got nice stuff. But hey, we also got some more fan mail. 
I don't want to say fan mail because I sent him a sticker too. But uh, Travis does firewood. Uh, Travis also has the Firewood Addicts podcast. Um, I believe that's what it's called. Uh, he's been going around and interviewing a bunch of people in the community and in the industry um, and just getting to know a little bit more of us personally. Um, I also sent Travis some stickers, so uh, definitely check out his, uh, his channel, which is uh, Travis Does Firewood and the Firewood Addicts Podcast. Um, both cool channels, man. He, uh, he lives out in Washington State, and he does a ton of firewood. But enough yapping. Thank you guys for the uh, stickers and the shirts and the hats and all that good stuff. Let's go through and attack this faller suspension kit. All right, so let me go ahead and preface this part. This is definitely not a how-to put the West Coast Soul Feller suspension kit on. This is probably a how not to. Um, I missed one crucial step, and I should have went back and watched uh, the Outside with Shy video, which I was referencing, before I actually did this, because I watched it two days before, and I forgot that there was a screw behind the chain catcher. And I'll show you here. And you can see where I destroy the spring in this thing so I can never use it again. So make sure you guys pay attention to detail, unlike me, and check this out how I screwed this thing up. <laughs> all right, let's get uh, all this stuff out of the way so I have some working space. I'm still gonna put this sprocket on, don't let me forget. Um, so I've got the uh, scrunch with the Allen wrench on the end. And I have to give credit to Mr. Uh, outside with shot. I'll put the video up here or there, wherever it shows up. But um, I watched Scheib's video on how to do this. Uh, I was not even aware that Scheib did this video. It says it's from about a year ago. Um, but out of all the videos that I watched, his was short, sweet, to the point. It was about eight minutes long, and it looked super simple, and it actually gave me the confidence to want to try this. Um, when I first bought this saw, the muffler mod was easy. It was four bolts, a little bit of blue Loctite, and I was done. Um, this here, you're actually tearing apart the saw a little bit more. And when I first bought this, you know, 1600 bucks to sit there and tear apart is a little intimidating. Um, so, like I said, thank you, Shy, for giving me the confidence to try this. Um, and I think I'm going to do okay. We will see. Maybe not. I don't know. I think all he did was bust this thing apart here. There we go. It's coming. Maybe. Ouch. All right. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm also going to uh, remove the handle here, the two screws on the handle. Man, I'm popular today. So it looks like all these screws are the same length, so it won't matter the orientation of how I lay them out. Okay, so there's that. That is busted loose. Oh look, that's a lot easier. So now we have to get this piece here pulled out, which should pop right out, should. Oh, you know what? I forgot. You had to take this chain catcher off. That was the first thing he did. And I think that loosens up this part up in here. See, I watched your video, Shibe, and I'm uh, I, I, not paying attention. Alrighty, there's that. Now, now this should pop right out. Maybe, I don't know. Alright, so... This piece here is being a pain in the butt. 
chives popped right out like just pulled right out i uh i'm gonna have to give mine a little bit of uh inspiration like with some prying i'll probably smash my fingers i'll probably cuss a little bit off camera um this is a pain I'm wondering if he didn't cheat and loosen his up when he uh, put his on. Oh man, that thing is on there. I'm going to break this spring just trying to get it off. So, I don't know how they expect you to get this on or off. But, uh, I basically just got, I had to pry on this thing. And on this part here, it's screwed in to the spring. So, I'm wondering if it's also screwed in inside here. Which it looks like it is. It is. So, wow. I don't know how they expect you to get this on and off. This might be a little troublesome. Shibe definitely made it look a lot easier because I destroyed the spring getting that thing out. And I even got a little bit of little boo-boo. All right, so he mentioned in his video, you need to pay attention to how this little uh, foam bushing goes on here. You can see that this new one is bigger, but you see that the, uh, the star pattern is facing out. So you want to take this off, pops right off, spit on it a little bit, and there we go. There's the new part of that. Um, and then this is the upgraded spring, which just simply screws on here. So now I guess I need to figure out how to screw this on in here. Unless I'm just going to simply set it on there. Eh, it definitely needs to be screwed screwed down somehow. Um, it's almost like there's not enough room though. wonder if I could put that on first. And then come through and screw this on. Let's loosen this guy just a touch get you out of the way I don't think this is going to work either I might just have to uh, do like Shab did Now it's stuck on there. All right, well, we're just gonna do this. That goes in, that goes on. Oh look, good enough. So now we've got these other two bushings here. Let's see if they're different. They look like they are both the same. So it is this one here and this one here. All right, there's one. Make sure we get that out of there. No clue where it went. Oh, here it is. So these are just a little upgraded here. Um, actually a lot. All right, there's one. 
This other one should pop right out. Yes, it did. And yes, I am just spitting on that thing. That popped right in. All right, so we're good to go here. There we go. And it goes up here. This goes in there. All right, there's that, there's that. We are good to go. Now, a little something extra I'm going to do, but it's probably not necessary, but I lock tight everything just because these things vibrate. And you never know what will vibrate loose. And this is just thread locker. This isn't anything crazy. And remember, you're just screwing into plastic here. Um, you don't have to crank these down. Once they're snug, they're snug. You can strip these out. Then we can put the two back in here for the other side of the handle. This stuff sat in the sun for a few minutes. It's a little uh, liquefied. There's that. We can slide this back down. We can put the uh, chain catcher back on. And then this one was Loctited in already. Give that a little snuggy snug. That's good. Couldn't do that again. That's good. All right. So now let's go ahead and do the sprocket and I'll show you the difference. So the sprocket comes off right here with this uh, snap ring. You gotta be careful when you take it off that way you don't lose it. Normally you can get right in here underneath it and you can pop it out. Um, let's see here. Or give it a little bit of inspiration. There we go. And be careful because these things can fly off. You don't want to lose this. And remember the orientation. And you can see here that this is concaved in. That way the snap ring sits inside of that. So that right there, that's a good, uh, good way to know that that stays there. But here's the difference between the sprockets. Let's see here. Let's see if I can get, get you in here. 
So if you see how the one on the left is worn down, that's from the chain wearing that sprocket out. And that affects your cutting speed. And the deeper those grooves get, the more your saw can wear out. So you could pick one of these new ones up for about 10 bucks at your local steel dealer, or you can get a pack of them for a lot cheaper if you wanna buy a couple of them in bulk. Um, I will keep this other one as a backup just in case. But, uh, and also while you're here, you can also check, let's see here. You can check the needles here. People forget to grease these right here a lot. And I actually need to grease mine. I'm gonna go get some grease, I'll be right back. All right, so this, I am just going to use some, uh, For the uh, needle bearings here, I'm just going to use some choke tube and gun grease. I mean, a uh, boomstick. That's all I've got handy. Uh, make sure your hands are clean. And just go through and lube this bad boy up. Now, you do want to wipe any excess off of this because this is also your clutch. Um, between, you know, all this here. But you definitely want to have some uh, grease on your wear points. And this is something that a lot of people overlook. So again, just going to wipe hands off again. And this was the cleanest towel I could find. Still not as clean as I would like it. But here we go. Needle bearings back on. They are lubed up. Uh, this is your clutch. Or no. I forget what the name of this is. It's not your clutch. It's your clutch uh, sprocket drive or something. I don't know. Tell me in the comments if you know what this part is. All right. There's that. We will put this back on. Now, you know what? Something I didn't pay attention to was this little groove right here. So there's a groove right here, and there's also a groove on the inside of this. You gotta match those up. All right, so we're matched up. New sprocket can go on. Sprocket's on. Remember we put our uh, spacer here with the concave facing out. And then our snap ring. And there we go. That is all she wrote. Make sure that thing's seated all the way around, which it is. All right, so that's the easy part. So now I can put this, uh, I completely trashed this spring. So I, I, there's no point in really keeping it, but I'm going to put it in there. I still don't know where that other rubber piece went. I'm sure I'll find it later, or it's somewhere around me. But uh, I got one more cool thing we're going to put on here. And this is the West Coast Saw clutch cover. Now, is this needed? Absolutely not. But everybody needs some bling bling on their saw. And I just got a bonus at work for getting somebody hired. So I splurged a little bit and I got myself something. So whatever. And now I need to pay attention to this, how uh, the chain guides go on. Looks like they go on just like this. And this one goes up. And I can't put this one on yet until I put the, uh, what you call it in there. And this here will just press on. There's that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, right here in front of me. So we're going to bust this off. 
And when you do these, you have to make sure that the uh, nut stays on the outside. Um, I can't, these are captive. Don't lose these little guys. Alrighty, and I definitely laid the uh, thread locker down heavy on these. <laughs> that one didn't even want to come out. All right, so these get dropped in here, and it looks like it will be captive as well, which is awesome. Probably have to bust that off. There we go. Those go in there like so. Your uh, dogs go back on. Again, I'm putting some uh, thread locker on here. I'm just going to get this one started. And then I will jump back and do this one facing me or closest to me because it's being a little bit of a pain in the butt Now this will make your saw a little bit heavier, but who cares when it looks this cool. And these things are sharp too. I keep stabbing myself over here. Definitely be careful. I'll give these another good crank. You don't want these things vibrating out. All right, so there's that. More battle scars. All right, so now we can go back to putting these on. The chain guides. And they go all the way down. As flat as you can get them and they did warn you from the factory that these are built to be super tight so when you first put this on they're gonna have to wear um, but yeah so far we got a new clutch we cleaned the saw and uh, or we got a new sprocket Um, clean the saw, new sprocket, uh, faller suspension kit. The only thing that this thing is missing now is the uh, Max Flow air filter, which will be getting put on here probably after the Paul Bunyan show because there's a bunch of uh, booths there that sell that at, uh, and you can get it a lot cheaper than you can anywhere right now and like I said at the beginning of this video I'm gonna flip my bar around straight this time so you can actually read the lettering on it I'll go ahead and get the chain set on the bar 
because that's what I like to do first. And then we'll slap this bad boy on here. I kind of just set it on here loosely and I start cranking the uh, tensioner up and when it gets close I guide the first couple uh, pieces of the chain into the bar and I continue tightening until it gets close to where it needs to be and then from here I will put my new bling bling on here <laughs> that thing looks awesome. I'll tell you what. <laughs> if this don't make you feel like a man, I don't know what will. Um, one of the biggest selling points for me on this was the chip management. It said that it had a larger area in here for chips. You know, I do a lot of noodling when I'm out in the wild. Um, so, and I'm always constantly stopping to take the chips out of the other one. So maybe this will help me. And it's supposed to be like 105 degrees today. It's disgusting. It, it definitely feels like it's about that. <sighs> Man, I don't know if I, uh, if it'll move, but yeah, that thing looks bad, bad. It looks bad. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, well, we are back and I realized I messed up. So let me show you what I messed up. All right, so remember I was fighting the original spring getting out of here? Well, the piece that the uh, spring locks into, this white piece on top, comes out. There's a hidden screw right here. You can see the hole now. If you take that screw out, this one, then the whole thing comes out and you can uh, put this on right. So once I fired the saw up and tested it, it was still wobbly and I was like, I looked at the spring and it wasn't connected. And I said, how in the crap do you do that? Well, I went back and watched Shibe's video again and that little screw he talks about. Well, I just missed it. But here we go. On to the next thing. Well, I don't know about you, but this saw looks really cool now. We'll have to get it in some wood and I'll have to give you some feedback on how I think the chip management is now. So the other day when I was working on the uh, dump trailer here, I noticed something. That I had a little bit of leakage here on my battery. Man, battery acid burns and cuts. Don't do that. So, I realized that there's nothing holding my battery around and I think it was bouncing around in here and it is splashing the acid around so I had to order a couple more uh, bolts to go through here and reconnect it so let's get that hooked back up and this is what I got here I got this right on Amazon it's uh nothing special made in China it sucks everything's made in China now but uh it's just a long bolt I'm probably going to put this end up on the top and I'll use these nuts on the bottom. I'll probably nut it and then a wing nut and then still use some blue Loctite thread locker. Alright, so there we go. I'm not even using the uh, other one that it came with. We're just putting this in here as is and I'll put the nuts on the bottom. So I guess I didn't record any of that, but I went a little bit overkill on this because uh, it came with it. I went washer, lock, washer, nut, and now I'm going um, wing nut. And then it came with this little plastic cap. We're just going to put them on there. That might help the thing from backing off too. And I did use some uh, Permatex thread locker on all of it. Is it overkill? Yes, probably. 
but isn't everything I do overkill? Just like the uh, West Coast Saw, Bark Box, and the Felling Dogs, and the... What did we just put on there? Clutch cover. Oh, and the faller suspension kit. Yeah. How to turn a $1,600 saw into a $2,200 saw. Go to West Coast Saw. Ah, but they uh, they make good stuff. Um, I'll put links in the description for everything that I used today. Um, the feller kit, uh, the bark box. Uh, they make a, a kit where you can get the whole thing all in one package. Um, I think the saw looks awesome. I'm sitting here staring at it now, and it's a, it's a beaut. Look at that. That thing looks good. But guys, that's all I got for you today. Um, make sure you guys check out Up in Smoke. Make sure you guys check out uh, the Firewood Addicts podcast, as well as Travis Does Firewood. And uh, thank you guys for the stickers. I still have a ton of stickers upstairs. I've procrastinated on it. Uh, maybe in an upcoming video, I will get the stickers done and uh, put them on wherever I want to put them and talk about all the channels that have sent me stuff. But take care of each other. I will see you back here next Saturday at 6.30 a.m. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. See ya.